What's up guys, it's Bean here, and today I'm here to do my 3 month review of my 2017 Pivot Mach 6. So a lot of you guys may know that I bought this bike in August. It had been exactly 2 years that I had owned my previous bike, which is a 2015 Norco Sight A7.2. And I wanted to upgrade to an enduro bike. I already had full suspension with my Norco Sight. It was a trail bike, but the suspension just wasn't quite there. And uh, man, this thing is just a beast behind me. So I purchased this bike with more enduro style riding in mind. Although the Norco Sight was excellent, and it was very nimble. The main reason I upgraded was because the bike was too small for me. I bought it when I was about 5'7", and I am 6'1 now. Uh, and that is a problem you have if you're a kid buying a full suspension mountain bike. It's expensive and you grow. Basically, I outgrew the bike super fast. It did last two years for me, which was awesome. Having a full suspension bike was just the most amazing thing. And I progressed a lot on that bike at Snow Summit. I started off just being a complete noob, just being terrible at riding at Snow Summit. And then I was able to hit a lot bigger jumps and clear them. That was the bike I learned pretty much everything I know about mountain biking on. I did have a Trek 820 before that, which was just, you know, your really low-end uh, hardtail bike. I owned that for probably about two years also, and then I upgraded to the Norco site, and then now the Pivot Mach 6. So one concern a lot of people have when buying a Pivot Mach 6 is people think that the frame is not very sturdy. And they're worried about it like flexing and stuff. And I can't say I've noticed that. It's a very stiff frame. Um, it's been totally fine for me. And it is aluminum, not carbon. I don't know, it may vary with carbon, but my aluminum frame has been perfect. Literally been no issues with it. I don't feel like it's flexing and stuff under high impact or anything like that. It seems totally fine to me. Uh, the DW link suspension has been absolutely amazing. It's a nice change from the Norco suspension link. Uh, basically what the DW link is, it's still a soft plush, uh, just like how you'd want a full suspension bike. But uh, the design of the DW link, it's kind of made so that you can pedal well going uphill and stuff as well. And having tested that at San Diego Oaks, I got to say that's definitely true. It's been a lot easier pedaling uphill on this Mach 6, which has a lot more travel than my Norco did, uh, but still way easier to pedal going uphill. I also have the ability to lock out the suspension if I want to. I don't do that that often on this bike. I did not have the option to lock out the shock on the Norco. I could the fork, but not the shock. So that could have been part of it. But I definitely think the DW Link's a lot better going uphill. The Fox suspension's been excellent. I have the 36 Performance on the front, which is Fox's lower end 36. Uh, as you can see, it's not a Kashima coat, it's just black. Uh, I still think it looks awesome, but it's still beastly. Uh, still got the 36 millimeters of diameter. It's still definitely a beast fork. I haven't thoroughly ridden a bike that has a Fox 36 Kashima on it, so I can't totally compare those. But I gotta say, it's still a plush fork, and if you're worried about that buying a bike, um, and it has the 36 Performance and not the factory one, uh, there's nothing to worry about, honestly. Uh, it's still a totally awesome fork. The Float X that's on this bike, you can see that's the Kashima Float X. Uh, that was actually put on the bike by mistake. Um, when I was ordering this, I thought I was getting it with the Float X Performance, which was the black one. So obviously it would have matched a little bit better, but they made like a $250 mistake because this shock is a lot more expensive than the performance one. And it's definitely very nice, and I think it definitely performs better than the performance one. It's funny how that works. The performance isn't as good as like the factory or Kashima one, but it doesn't match as well, obviously, but I think it still provides a nice accent color to the bike. Somehow, throughout all this time, I've managed to not put any scratches on the bike except the little tiny one inside the fork. And that's because I was trying to ride the bike and transport the bike stand that it's on at the same time, and obviously that was a bad idea. I shouldn't have been doing that. And it just kind of made its way through the wheel into the fork, so that wasn't fun, but... Uh, it's just a little tiny scratch, not a big deal, and you can't even see it because it goes on the inside of the fork. But as you can see, the metallic paint on this Mach 6 is just excellent. It sparkles in the sun. The sun's setting right now. It's like getting dark, so hopefully the lighting doesn't get too bad. But it sparkles very nicely in the sun. It looks really good. Uh, and that's something different compared to like, the gloss paint that you see on a lot of bikes. It's not like a total metallic finish, but it's like almost satin at the same time. But it still sparkles in light, which is awesome. So it's kind of like a mix of both. I don't really know how to describe it any better than that, but it looks amazing in my opinion. The one thing I still want to do to this bike is, as you can see, I still have all the Hope parts on it. The Hope pedals, Hope stem, Hope hubs, obviously, Hope seat clamp. Uh, I went all out with the Hope parts on this bike. I think it looks great, and uh, I decided to color match the fork and shock. Um, so you can see this has the Hope blue. It's pretty much as close to matching as it's going to get. It's not going to be perfect, but I still think it looks great. I want to color match the Pivot in the Mach 6 decal here. Maybe the one right here as well. Uh, that might look cool. But I think if these were all color matched and look blue, this thing would just look like a beast. 
Now, the rims on this bike are kind of meh. Uh, they're kind of heavy, but they haven't let me down so far. They've stayed in true the whole time I've had it during these three months, and I've ridden it pretty often. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's called Sun Ringlay or whatever. I mean, they don't suck, I guess. Uh, they're kind of heavy, and the decals are meh on them. I looked up, like, custom decals for them just to kind of keep that whole blue theme going. I think that would be sick, especially, like, rim, rim decals are, like, my favorite thing. Um, but I just did not like the options that Sun Ringlay had, so... At some point, I'm thinking of upgrading to race face rims. Probably not for a while, though, because uh, I don't really have a need unless these rims get damaged. So Tires, the Maxxis High Roller 2s. Um, my Norco site had a High Roller 2 in the back, and that performed nicely. It doesn't have much rolling resistance to it, and it still grips pretty well in the back, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, they do seem to wear pretty quickly, though. At least mine have. I don't know if that's just the certain like design, because I know they have like Exo Tread and stuff like that, so I know there's differences between them all. I don't really know the differences, but these are just the tires that it came with. And um, two high roller twos is not my ideal setup. Um, I prefer a grippier tire in the front, uh, like maybe a Magic Mary in the front, or just stick with Maxxis and I could get a, a Minion DHF. But the high roller two is not super gripping the front, but it's fine in the back. Typically, I like running aggressive tires in the front more, so. I do like, however, that the Maxxis logos are white, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Now I have the Fox Transfer Airdropper on there, and it's actually been really, really nice. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be as nice as like a hydraulic dropper, because originally I wanted a Reaver. Uh, but when I did more research into the Fox Transfer and saw that it would go to any position like the Reverb did, and I hopped on that right away, and it's been excellent. The only thing is the lever that it came with is not the best. Um, I know there's like a wolf lever that you could put on there too or something like that. This lever is just meh. It's not the greatest thing. It's totally fine though. Um, it does squeak a little bit. So you can see that. That's not a very nice sound, but <laughs> uh, little WD-40 could probably fix that, I'm sure. Um, at some point, I'll probably get the nicer lever because that lever just feels kind of cheap. But the dropper itself has just been excellent. Um, no servicing has been needed for that, and it's just been perfect. Now, when you buy a bike from Phoenix Cycling, um, they do give you free tune-ups for a year, and I've only had to bring it in for a tune-up once, and that's just because when I was pedaling really hard, the chain would sometimes slip a little bit, and uh, I think that problem is totally fixed now. It did happen once or twice when I went to Santiago Oaks recently, um, but it's been pretty much fine. I'll have to keep riding it just to see, but it's definitely not been a big deal. Had to bump up the ISO on my camera a little bit because it's starting to get dark. But uh, the brakes on this bike, uh, they don't suck. They're totally fine. Uh, they're nothing super high end. They are a hydraulic disc brakes, so that is still good. Uh, but they're not the nicest hydraulic disc brakes out there. I'll probably end up switching out the rotors, and it comes with a 180 on the front and 160 on the back. I'll probably put the 180 on the front on the back and then buy a 200 millimeter rotor for the front. Just kind of see if that makes a nice difference to it or not. Maybe down the line get new brakes. I probably be cool to get hope brakes since uh you know i have a lot of hope parts on this bike now the number one thing that people wonder about uh with hope parts are their hubs and are they worth it uh well here you can find out for yourself in my opinion they're definitely worth it so I think I pretty much summed up everything I like about this bike. Uh, I don't really have any negatives with it so far. Uh, the only negative thing about it is this little gap in between the frame because in the pictures they didn't show that, but it turns out that's something with all XL bikes. It's just how they make them bigger. Uh, it doesn't bother me that much, but I know it does bother a lot of people that are into the Mach 6 and they probably wouldn't buy one if they had to buy XL just because of that reason. It doesn't really bother me that much at all. Uh, it's just one little negative thing that's not my favorite about it. But yeah, that is my three-month ownership review of the 2017 Pivot Mach 6 Aluminum. Um, let me know if there's anything I forgot to cover in this, or maybe I'll address that in my six-month ownership review. I'm going to keep doing these. Uh, I'll probably do three-month, six-month, nine-month, and then one year. And after that, I'll probably do two-year, and then three-year, and then if I still have the bike, just keep going there. Because right now, it doesn't seem like I'm going to need to upgrade anytime soon. The bike's been great, um, and it hasn't had any real serious issues with it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please leave a like. Um, and I hope this helped you if you are looking into getting a Pivot Mach 6. They did just redesign them for 2018, and they got to say they, they look really good. Um, the aluminum one, they basically got rid of this little part right here, and they just made this stretch out to here, which looks pretty good, I think. They just made it one long top tube, which I think looks pretty good. And they did just redesign the Mach 6 Carbon, and it's a lot longer now than it used to be. Um, some people say that the bikes are too short, but honestly, it's totally fine to me. It doesn't feel short whatsoever. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.
Call me Bobby Tarantino living on the level and I'm prophesizing everything we know because of the internet. I made a million and another million. That's where the Gambino, he wanted the realest. I swear he the realest. But anyway, back to the subject at hand. I just performed for an 